Number 15 then from paper two of the 2021 National Five resource paper. It's a seven mark question this time. So a bit of mathematical modeling here. So what it says is you've got a rectangle. You don't know what its length is, but its length is always five more than its breadth. But you don't know what its breadth is. But since they're related, you just need a variable for one of them. And that's what it says. Write down an expression for its length in terms of its breadth, because they're connected, just for the one mark. Well, it told you it's five more. So the length will be the same as the breadth, plus that extra five. That's the first mark. Then in part B for two marks, now it gives you an extra bit of information. The rectangle's got an area of 20 square centimetres. And then it just says, show that this is the case. Well, it must be something to do with the area. So that's what you would do. Just work out the area. What's the area of the rectangle? It'll be the length times the breadth. The length is x plus 5, and the breadth is x. Either way around. But you were told that the area is 20. So now I can say this. Right, I'll just now pop that at the front because it looks neater that way. x times x plus 5 is equal to 20. The area is 20. And then if you multiply that out and gather it up, hopefully you'll get that. So what do you get? Multiplying it out. x squared plus 5x, bring that across, minus 20 equals 0. So there's the result. And part C, so for that to be exactly 20, there's only going to be a particular set of values. There'll only be one pair of x of x and the length that will give that. And that's what you have to find. Calculate x. It's just one value of x. Calculate x so that you do end up with an area of 20 and give your answer correct to just one decimal place. Well, that'll be the quadratic formula because you've got a quadratic equation here. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Whoops. All over 2a. And if you like, just put a wee note at the side of what they are. So a is the coefficient of the x squared. Stepping in, b is the coefficient of the x, and c is the constant on its own. Right, putting that in. So the negative of b, negative 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared. 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 20 all over 2 times just the 1. Now, putting that down gets the first mark. Now, when you're doing this, it's always best to work this part out separately so that you end up with a nice little neat expression here. Because what you've got there is, I'll just work out this discriminant here, you've got 25, take away a negative, is plus 80. So that part in the square root should be 105. In fact, for working that out, you get a mark. Although if you just typed it all in and got the, the two answers, that would have been incorporated into it. I just prefer to have it like this. So I've got negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 105. Well, that's more than 10, so I know I can ignore that negative. But then in the marking scheme, they've got the two answers down for that mark. Because strictly speaking, the answer is going to be negative 5 plus that up in 2, because x is positive. But, well, we'll just have to put them both down, I suppose. So the two answers would be, do the calculation with the plus, and do the calculation with the minus. Always do the minus first, because you know that's going to be smaller. So do it with the minus, and you get, change it to decimal, negative 7.623, and so on. I'll not put an R, I'll put a wee comma. Oh, that made it worse. Get rid of that in a minute. And then do it with the plus. So I've just change that to a plus and do it again and get rid of that. 2.623 and so on. So doing that gets a mark. And then finally, so what is the appropriate value of x given the way that they asked for, which is one decimal place? Well, it has to be the positive one. 
and to one decimal place it would be 2.6. Maybe I'll give the wee reason. X is greater than zero, and it was all in centimeters. You don't need to put that bit in. I'll just put it there. So number 16 then, just for two marks. So this is the one that's going to involve those trig identities you're meant to know. Sine squared plus cos squared makes one, and tan is sine over cos. Because all it says is expand and simplify this and show you're working. Well, it does say expand, so I suppose the first thing I could do is expand it, get rid of the brackets, even though that might not be the best thing to do first. So cos x times tan x and cos x times 1. Well, apparently that's not worth a mark yet. Well, there's not much more you can do, actually. So you've got cos x times... Now, the tan can change into sine over cos. So cos x times sine x over cos x. And then you've got plus the cos x. So that's one of the marks. And then those cosines will cancel out, just leaving a sine here. So you've got a sine x plus a cos x, and that's, that's it done. The alternative. Not doing the expand first would have been to say you've got cos x time and expand it in there. Sine x over cos x plus 1. So that would have been one of the marks. And then multiply it out, because that'll take fewer steps. So cos x times the cos x cancelled out, just leaving that sine x. And the cos x times the 1 just makes a cos x. That would have been quicker. If I didn't hear that instruction, expand first of all. It'd be better not to expand first of all. But it didn't actually mean that. It just meant your final result had to be expanded and not in a bracket form. And so to question 17, the last question. Three marks for, it's a little diagram, it's a vector pathways one. In the end, what it says is express AG, this is what you want. You want the vector AG in terms of U and T. One other bit of information it says is that this point here, that point is a third of the way along, it's a third of the way from C to B. So you can either put a third there. That, well, that means the ratio would be one to two, if you like. One bit out of the three. But just need to remember it's a third of the way. Well, if your aim is to get A, G, you just have to think, what pathway would take me from A to G? Preferably following paths that I know. So you could go from A to C, because I know that. And then you could go from C to G. Except I don't know that, but you can find that, because there's various steps. I could step to the side and say, but I know that C to G is a third of C to B, so I could follow on. So that would be like going from A to C, plus a third of the way from C all the way to B, because I can find that. I can do a little side calculation for C, B. Because C, B means how can you get from C to B? So if I want to get from C to B following paths that I know, I can go that way around. I can go off to the side. So I could put that down. I'll put this down over here. C, B is equal to C to A. You could just write negative T, but I'll put it down. C to A followed by A to B. As long as you start at C and eventually finish at B, that will do. So what is C A? It's against T. So that's a negative T. And what is A B? That is U. Now, that's most of the questions. There's definitely a mark for this part for getting C B. Now the next part is for feeding it in. That third that third should have been worth a mark, but you don't actually get it until you put everything in terms of T. So now I can put it in though. A C was T plus a third of CB was negative T plus U. Now you get the mark. 
they just got to tidy that up. So you've got a whole T take away a third, so that's two thirds, or you could just multiply and tidy it afterwards. So you've got T, whoops, minus a third of T, but plus a third of U. So finally, AG is going to be, taking that away leaves you two thirds of T plus one third of U. Now, that result there, even though it's something you don't do, is something that's called the section formula. This little pattern here, which is a way of finding the coordinates of a point that divides a line into a certain ratio.